Welcome to the third section of the course. This is our first case study in machine learning applications. In this section, we will discuss spam detection. We start this section with a summary of the topic. I discuss the purpose and objective of spam detection and give some ideas of how to approach it. Next, I discuss the data, including providing the source and some initial processing. Then I discuss more pre-processing steps for natural language processing. Final video of the section shows how to train a classifier for spam detection using the naive Bayes algorithm. Let's get started. This video is an introduction to the topic of spam detection. I discuss why we want to detect spam, our objective, and some ideas of how to approach the problem. I bet you already know what spam email is from experience, but here is a reminder. The spam email message, also known as junk mail, is an unsolicited email message often sent to many recipients. Spam messages range in purpose. Most of the time they're just advertising, but they can also be more sinister such as attempting to defraud the recipient, spread malware, or obtain sensitive information. The name spam comes from a sketch by the British comedy group Monty Python where, in a restaurant, the meat product called spam is in every meal, cannot be avoided, and quickly grows tiring. This seems to describe the experience of electronic spam well, though the latter is often malicious. In this section, we will be building a spam filter. The idea of a spam filter is to use the contents of an email message to decide whether the message is spam. The filter could be built by hand with the designer tailoring rules for deciding whether a message is considered spam, but frequently email users label messages as junk and thus these labeled datasets can be used to train classifiers using machine learning techniques to detect spam. What do spam detectors usually do? Usually a spam detector views messages as bags of words. Some words are more common in spam messages and some are more common in non-spam messages, often called ham in this context. Training usually involves deciding how likely a message is to be spam when certain words appear. The algorithm will learn which words to associate with spam and which to associate with ham. The classification algorithm used is often a naive Bayes classifier. When a classifier has been trained, when a message comes in, it will check the message. Depending on which words appear and how frequently they appear, it will label the message as likely to be spam or allow the message to go through unmarked. Here are things to watch out for with spam detection systems. First, spam is context dependent. This means that a spam detection system is only as good as the data it's trained on. Systems trained on old data may fail to capture newer genres of spam. They will need to be updated. A trick to get past a spam detection system is putting the message in embedded images. The filter will often ignore the image and see nothing wrong with the text, so the spam gets through. Blank spam exists. Sometimes spammers send messages with no content or even subject. They have their reasons. Of course, you might just call a completely blank message from an unknown address spam and the problem is solved. People will often not check their junk mail folders unless prompted. This means that messages that are not spam but incorrectly classified may go unread. This could be bad for the recipient. 